When it comes to offensive linemen, Wisconsin is the cream of the crop. Since the year 2000, the Badgers have had 23 offensive linemen drafted and have had many notable names, potential future Hall of Famers, and Pro Bowlers. The subject of today's video is seen as the next great Wisconsin prospect to enter the NFL. His name is Joe Tipman. He is currently a rookie for the New York Jets and was taken in the second round. He's probably the most underrated Wisconsin offensive lineman in the last few years, has already taken over for the Jets, and has a pretty crazy story of getting to this point. In today's video, I want to introduce you to who Joe Tipman is, talk about how he got here, and why everyone is raving about him. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Joe Tipman. So going back in time, as I said, the Badgers have produced a ton of offensive linemen, and he is now a rookie with the Jets. And it's crazy because that comes full circle. He has a connection to the Jets as their former offensive tackle, Jason Fabini, was his trainer. The Tipman family brought in Fabini to help their son in fifth grade because he was in the area. He ended up going to the same high school as Joe, and from a very young age, he was seen as the next big prospect in the area. He was nicknamed Big Joe because his mom said, quote, he was born big and was always a head taller than all of his classmates. He was also always the nicest guy on the field as he came from a huge devout Catholic family in Fort Wayne, Indiana and truly lived out his faith all the time and it would help him later on at Wisconsin. Joe always loved sports, but when basketball didn't pan out, he credited his parents for helping him find a love for off-season training in football. In fifth grade, he got that trainer and decided to take the game seriously. It did absolute wonders for him as Tipman said, quote, he coached me from fifth grade through my senior year of high school. He helped me with my transition from high school to college, and he's helping me now with my transition to college to the NFL. Tipman was big and fell in love with the offensive line. He began to put people on notice in the area, and his coach said, quote, in seventh grade, you could see how special Joe was from an athletic standpoint. He moved very well for his size and was always very smart. In eighth grade, he was unstoppable and frequently took it down a notch or two in practice because he didn't want to hurt the other kids on the team. By the time he was in 8th grade, there was no lineman in the area that could deal with him. At the same time though, he was told some crazy news. His coach said, quote, I remember telling Joe in 7th grade that he had the potential to be in the Big Ten someday. Joe would end up taking that to heart, and after spending time at St. Charles Borromeo, he wound up at Bishop Dwanger High School. As a freshman, he was once again told that he had Big Ten potential, and he believed it. By the time he was a sophomore, Tipman was a big deal and remembers the moment he got his chance. After practice one day, his coach gave him an envelope and he was super excited to get home and open it with his parents. He said, quote, Mom, look what I've got. What was inside was an invitation to a football camp at the University of Wisconsin. That made quite the impression on him and made him take things even more seriously. His mom said, quote, from that day on, he had a change of heart. He began to put more time and effort into working out, lifting, and speed and agility. Even after football practice, he'd spend time doing extra stuff. In terms of recruiting, he gained early offers from Ball State, Cincinnati, and Western Michigan, but bigger schools such as Notre Dame and Wisconsin were starting to recruit Joe pretty hard. His recruitment would take off, and eventually, he became the fifth commit for Wisconsin's 2019 class. He chose the Badgers over Iowa, Indiana, Purdue, and Cincinnati. Many predicted he would choose the Fighting Irish, as he was in Notre Dame territory, but it doesn't seem they ever truly extended him an offer. He also didn't want it. The Irish said that if he would visit, he would get an offer. Tipman said, quote, Sorry, I like where I'm at. He didn't want to jeopardize any of his relationships and was completely fine with going to Wisconsin. Why the Badgers? Well, he credited Wisconsin's tradition of putting Lyman in the NFL, and he also really liked Madison. At the time, he was only a three-star recruit, but would end up becoming a four-star. As a senior, he won every award an offensive lineman could win, as he was Indiana's Mr. Football Offensive Lineman, first team All-State, and a 4A state champion. He also played defense and had 41 tackles, three sacks, and three forced fumbles. He was a four-star and a huge get for Wisconsin, but his character was even better. One story in particular was awesome. There was a new freshman football manager sitting alone at lunch one day and shared this story. He said, quote, I was at lunch and nobody wanted to sit by me. I didn't have a lot of friends and didn't go to school with a lot of these kids, so I'm sitting there by myself. Eventually, Joe comes over and sits at the table with me, and the next thing you know, everybody is sitting with me. Joe was a great guy, and he won multiple sportsmanship awards, and it all went back to his Catholic faith and his relationship with the Lord. He was a big deal, and as a 6'6 lineman, he was listed as a four-star recruit, the number 15 offensive tackle, and the 157th best player in the class of 2019. So, how would Tipman do at Wisconsin? Let's take a look. When Tipman would arrive at Wisconsin, he would decide to redshirt his first year. The staff didn't know what to do with him, as he took snaps at three different positions along the line, 
and they were desperately trying to find the best fit. He saw limited action in 2020 as he was eventually moved to right guard and suffered a shoulder injury. After getting moved around, Joe got eventually moved to center. This would change his life. He said, quote, I had never played it at all. There are a lot of differences as you are a lot closer to the defensive lineman. You're the closest one and everything just happens sooner at the center spot. That was a little bit of an adjustment and I still say I'm adjusting. At the time, Wisconsin's offensive line coach Joe Rudolph knew he had someone special in his hand. He was a guy who was athletic enough to play tackle, strong enough to play guard, and smart enough to play center. That was a rare find. That 2021 season was one of the most dominant seasons of any college football center in recent memory, and no one really ever talks about it. Joe ended up allowing zero sacks and just had four pressures in total. He ended up having 260 pass blocking snaps and opened up countless running lanes for their star freshman running back Braylon Allen. Wisconsin would end the year averaging over 211 yards per game, and they'd have 26 touchdowns. Of course, it was a team effort, but Tipman was the anchor of it all. He would decide to return for the 2022 season, and he still dominated. He allowed just five pressures in 359 pass blocking snaps, and he did something he had never done before. He allowed a single sack. It came in week seven against Michigan State, and do you wanna know how he bounced back? Well, he allowed just one pressure over his last five games of his career, just one. Tipman was a bona fide star and declared for the 2023 NFL Draft. He graded out as the highest rated lineman for Wisconsin and played the most snaps of anyone on the team. One scout said, quote, Tipman is a big blocker and makes an impact wherever he goes. That's the one sentence summary for him. And at six foot six, 313 pounds, he's a menace who walls defenders on the interior line. His flaws? Well, some say his size contributes to a few drawbacks, most notably his leverage. Shorter opponents can easily get under his pads and that could potentially be tough for him. As he was getting ready for the draft, he was a consensus day two pick. He was poised to become the third Bishop Dwanger graduate to be selected in the draft behind his old trainer and former tight end, Tyler Eifert. All in all, he ended up getting selected with the 43rd overall pick by the New York Jets in the second round. Joe said, quote, as soon as I got the call, I thought of my former trainer. Just being able to learn from him, he's been my mentor since fifth grade. For me to end up getting drafted by the same organization is truly amazing. The Jets have been searching for a long-term solution at center since the retirement of Nick Mangold, and that was all the way back in 2016. Joe was expected to compete for the starting center job with veterans Connor McGovern and Wes Schweitzer. The early indication is that he's the favorite to win the job, and one Jet scout said, quote, McGovern will get every opportunity to stave off the rookie, but it looks like it'll be Tipman's job to lose. If he's ready for the starting role, the Jets are gonna have him ready to go. There's a reason why the Jets made him the highest drafted center in this year's class. Many believe he has the tools and athleticism to be a long-term starter in the league, will be able to help protect Aaron Rodgers and open up lanes for the running backs, and help the Jets compete for a Super Bowl. It seems the organization is loading up for a run, and one of the keys to success is a good offensive line and a good center. Tipman is exactly that, and so far in preseason, he's looked pretty great, showing a lot of potential and a lot of flash. We'll have to wait and see how he does, but I think Tipman will be great for the Jets, will have multiple Pro Bowls to his name, and will go down as one of the better Wisconsin linemen ever. But what do you guys think? If you're a Jets or Wisconsin fan, what do you think of Joe Tipman? Who's a rookie I could cover next? And what other topics should I also make a video on? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.